Hey everyone, it's been a while, but it's time for another Super Collider video. So, earlier this spring, I created what I've been calling the Mashup Machine, which is a program that allows for playback and synchronization of multiple sound files. The primary purpose of this project was to create a performance environment uh, for making mashup music in real time. This will be a two-part video. Uh, this video, which is part one, will be a live coding session and an explanation of the basic operational principles of the mashup machine. And part two will feature the performance interface as well as a demonstration of making mashup music in real time. I want to just go over a few caveats before we start coding. Number one is that this program only deals with pre-recorded audio files, so you can't, for example, uh, plug in a microphone and start beatboxing. Uh, the fact is there are a lot of variables that spring up when you start dealing with live audio looping instead of pre-recorded audio looping, uh, such as finding the beginning and the end of the loop, avoiding clicks, uh, synchronization issues, and avoiding feedback, and all sorts of things like that. And since this program is all about mashup music, I felt that it made the most sense to restrict the user to pre-recorded audio. But, you know, keep in mind you can always record, uh, record some audio somewhere else and trim your file and normalize it and whatever, and then just then you can feed it into the machine as a pre-recorded audio file. Uh, number two, the mashup machine is heavily beat-oriented, and it's designed to use sound files that are in the time signature of 4-4 four, four, and are either 2, 4, or 8 measures long. Uh, Super Collider won't complain if you feed it sound files that don't conform to these, uh, these metric specifications, but you will get, uh, shall we say, interesting results if you go that route. Um, so you just be warned. But of course, as always, I highly encourage you to experiment with your loops and experiment with the code in this video. Um, there are some other features worth pointing out, but I think they'll be more relevant in the, uh, in the second video. So uh, let's get started. Um, there are four components to the mashup machine that uh, I envisioned. Uh, and so in Super Collider Lingo, that means we'll be making four synth defs. And the first one is just a tempo synth, which will um, output in beats per minute, um, uh, output, it'll output a value in beats per minute at the control rate. Um, uh, the second component is a repeating linear ramp that ranges from zero to one. Uh, the frequency of this repetition will be determined by the tempo synth and the output of the linear ramp will be used as a sample index into one or more sound files where zero represents the beginning of the sound file and one represents the end. Uh, the third component is um, just a uh, buffer playback synth, something which um, it will use the, um, the linear ramp uh, sample index data from the synth before it, and it will simply use that to play a sound file. And the last component, uh, I always feel it's it's nice to have a master, a master synth or something at, at the end of the synth chain. Uh, you know, this allows the output from multiple audio playback synths to be sent to the same place, so you can adjust their volume or adjust uh, equalization uh, together. You know, instead of having to adjust individual synths. Uh, all right, so that's that's basically what I've envisioned. Um, so let's let's get going here. First thing we want to do is name the server. It's pretty much it's usually already done for us. And there it is, but uh, it's it's good practice anyway. Um, so our first synth def is going to be um, our tempo synth def, and uh, I'll make the arguments and variables as we go. But we're definitely going to need uh, a variable for the uGen that is spitting out beats per minute. And I'm going to call it tempo env because I'm going to use um, an env gen um, to generate the um, control rate tempo value. And the first argument is an env object. And there are many, many ways to do this. I mean, if you just want a control rate number, you know, it's, you can use pretty much any old uGen. Uh, I like using env. And gen for one reason or another, and I'm going to have this 
envelope just sit at a value of one, the um, the duration between envelope points is kind of irrelevant, uh, as is the um, interpolation. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna leave this at with a default done action of zero. So when the envelope has finished after one millisecond, it'll just sit on a value of one, and um, it spit that value out at the control rate. Uh, I'm also gonna make um, a uh, a gate argument uh, so that I can uh, re-trigger the envelope um, if I choose. And I'm I'm proceeding this with a t underscore. Uh, because, uh, and I guess we'll have to declare that argument up here. Uh, we'll set it to uh, default of zero, and it doesn't really matter, it's just kind of a dummy argument. And um, I'm proceeding it with t underscore because whenever you're uh, creating a trigger argument, you you should uh, proceed it with uh, t underscore because the argument behaves like a trigger. Um, if you look up the, the synth step help file, uh, you can read right here just at the, at the very beginning about the trigger rate. Arguments that begin with t underscore uh, will be made as a trig control. Okay, so you can look that up if you want. But uh, the last the last sentence is what's most important. This is useful for triggers. So when you're creating a, a trigger argument, proceed it with uh, t underscore. And um, the last argument for nfgen is going to be um, the level scale. And that will be the actual beats per minute, uh, which again we have to declare up here. Uh, 120 is a good default for that. And um, so the way level scale works is that it just scales the output of the envelope, which before level scaling is uh, just 1, and then we multiply that by beats per minute. So the envelope will actually be just spitting out control rate uh, values at 1 times beats per minute, which, is, which will be beats per minute, obviously. Uh, that is all we need, so the last thing we have to do is uh, output, having a control rate out eugen, and once again we need to make an argument for output. And I think that covers everything. Okay, there's our first synth def. Let's keep going. Um... Why is my text red? I'm just going to ignore that. Okay, this will be our linear ramp, and I'm calling it PHS, which is short for phaser, which is going to be the unit generator that we'll use to generate the linear ramp. Um, okay, we're going to need some arguments and variables. Um, as I said before, the linear ramp is going to take uh, data from the tempo synth above it, so uh, I'll make a, uh, a tempo variable, and then we'll also need a, a variable for the linear ramp itself. So tempo is very easy. We just need to uh, use an in unit generator at the control rate. Uh, so let's see. So we need a you know an input argument. Uh, you know what what bus will uh, this unit generator be reading from? We'll just use a dummy argument there. Um, and one channel, right? This is just a single value, so it's just just needs one uh, a one channel bus. Uh, and then, okay, now we're gonna make our linear ramp, and there are um, well, first of all, okay. In my in my opinion, the linear ramp is is the hardest part to grasp. It's it's a little bit of math, and it's a little bit of you know uh, mental gymnastics. But what we want is an audio rate signal that repeatedly travels linearly from 0 to 1. And we're going to use this ramp as uh, as an index, a uh, sample index, into a sound file. And as I've said before, the frequency of the repetition will be determined by the output of the tempo synth. So we're going to be using uh, tempo somewhere in here. We'll get to that. Um, uh, and now I'm assuming that most users will feel most comfortable using beats per minute as a unit of tempo measurement. Uh, so we're going to need to convert from beats per minute to a value uh, in units that are more meaningful to the eugen that will generate our linear ramp. Uh, th there are three primary candidates for generating a linear ramp, and those are uh, phaser, sweep, and 
LF saw. Maybe there are more, but these are the three that come to mind when I'm trying to make a linear ramp. Um, and I, I, you should you should look up the help files on these and see how they behave. They're all they're each uh, you know different from one another, but they all sort of generate the same shape of a waveform. And yeah, I'm sure they'd all work one way or another. It really just depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, I'm going to use phaser because uh, unlike sweep, phaser lets you explicitly declare uh, a range of output values. You can there's an argument for the minimum and the maximum. Uh, whereas sweep w without a, a trigger. Uh, it will simply just continue advancing, you know, as as high as you let it, as high as you let it go. And um, uh, unlike LF saw, uh, phaser can reset its phase while it's running, and LF saw only provides you with uh, an initial phase argument. Um, and it's 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 always useful to be able to reset the phasers and just you know set them back to to zero. So we're going to use phaser. And uh, this this needs to be an audio rate index since it's it's gonna be you know this is just uh, when you're when you're using it as a sample index you want to be as accurate as possible so audio rate and so let's see the arguments for phaser are uh, trigger uh, a trigger again we're gonna use the t underscore argument here it'll reset the phaser uh, a rate argument which is um, probably the most complicated argument and then a, uh, a start and an end value, and um, w we can go with the default on the reset position. I think it's zero by default. Okay, so um, the first argument will be um, we'll call it t dot. No, sorry, t underscore reset. And when this uh, argument is set to one, the phaser will reset to its starting position. Okay, so the rate argument, phaser interprets its rate argument as the amount of change per sample. And in the help file it says a value of 1 means that the unit generator will increment by 1 every sample. So if the sample rate is 44,100, then after one second, uh, phaser will be at 44,100, assuming the maximum argument is high enough. Um, okay, so let's look at what we have so far. We've got um, We've got uh, a variable called tempo, which is a control rate uh, unit generator uh, in beats per minute. Uh, since we're dealing with samples, it's probably wise to convert to seconds, which we do, uh, we do like this. Um, right, so now we have a value in beats per seconds. And we're expecting to be dealing with loops that are 2, 4, and 8 measures long. And in a time signature of 4-4, that's 8, 16, and 32 beats, respectively. And we want the phaser to move more slowly uh, when there are more beats in the loop, uh, you know, to, to compensate for the length of the loop. So it makes sense to slow the rate of the phaser by dividing by the number of beats. And so here's another argument that I guess the user will have to specify, you know, we're making a phaser and is this phaser going to be used for uh, you know, two measure loops, four measure loops, or eight measure loops? And we'll just go with the default of eight beats, so a two measure loop, but uh, you can always change that. Um, so um, it, is this sufficient as a rate argument for phaser? Well, it's actually not, because uh, phaser expects an amount of change per sample. Uh, so what we need to do, since this is um, in seconds, this is a, uh, a number of uh, beats per seconds, and then accounting for the number of beats, all we have to do is divide by the uh, sample rate. And this, this will get us what we want for our rate argument. And then a minimum and a maximum. Let's see. Okay, I think that looks good. Um, so we've got a phaser, which is using the um, tempo output from the tempo synth and generating a linear ramp. And so all we need to do is just output this, and we need an audio rate uh, out unit generator. Um, uh, we need an, one final argument for the 
bus index. Zero is just a, a default argument. We'll change that when we instantiate it. And um, our phaser. I think that'll do it. I'll just do a quick uh, syntax error check. And look at that, we've got problems. Uh, I wonder why it doesn't like that. Maybe we need to boot the server, otherwise sample rate doesn't do anything. Okay, well, is I, am I correct in that? So now it's not complaining. Okay, well, that's good. So, uh, our third synth def, call it uh, buff play. Now this is going to use the information from the linear ramp and use it as a sample index into a sound file. Arguments and variables. Um, we need uh, information from our phaser and uh, the actual signal. We'll call it sig. We can call it you know sound or whatever you want to call it. Sig will be the actual output from the uh, sound file. Um, just as we did in the previous one, we need to make a an in unit generator. Uh, same sort of situation, just a one channel. A one channel bus and for our buffer playback we're going to use buff read b u f r d it's a buffer reading oscillator and uh, it has a, a phase argument which is a an audio rate uh, modulatable index into the buffer which is exactly what we have so this is perfect uh, let's see, the arguments, I guess I should go back here and just remind myself, number of channels, buff num, the buffer we're going to use, phase, loop, interpolation. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and assume that all the sound files we deal with are two channels, stereo sound. Um, we'll make an argument called buff, so we can specify the, um, the uh, index of the buffer. Uh, let's just use our phase, uh, but here we have to be careful here because our um, our phaser is ranging from zero to one, but uh, buff read will interpret that as uh, a sample index, right? And so zero means the zeroth sample, one means the first sample, and two is the second sample. And so right now we're only um, <laughs> sort of alternating between the zeroth and first sample. So to correct this, we just simply need to scale by the number of frames in the buffer, which we can do with the unit generator buff frames. And uh, let's see, loop, uh, we, we want this to loop, although that may actually not have a difference, not, not make a difference because we're using a, a repeating linear ramp, but just to be safe, we'll use one anyway to say, yes, we do want it to loop. And then because I'm feeling fancy, we'll do a cubic interpolation. All right, that looks good. Um, let's make, um, I, mean, I don't know if we're going to use this, but we'll make an amplitude argument. So if we want, we can adjust um, a buff play synth individually. And there's a really nice convenient unit generator called endgate. I'm sorry, endgate.new. Um, and if you look this up, you'll see it's um, a convenience class for an envelope generator combining fade time and gate arguments. The primary purpose of using env gate is so uh, we can say things like, you know, synth, you know, buff play dot set, fade time equals five, and gate equals zero, and it will fade out over um, five seconds or, or something like that. It's just, it's just sort of a convenient thing to tag on to the end of your synth defs just in case you want to use fade times. Um, I think that's I think that's all we need. Another audio rate output. And we need to make a, an out argument. And remember, these, these values here, 
These are all just defaults. Uh, they're not very good defaults, but it's just good practice to use defaults. I'll make sure to specify better values when we actually instantiate these. Uh, let me quick check on this one. Okay, we're good. Finally, make some room here. Our master synth dev. Okay. We're going to need, uh, well, our signal, first of all, the sound file playback. And I'm going to build in um, a high pass filter and low pass filter. And I'm going to use the, uh, the same envelope procedure as I did in the tempo synth. Okay. Um, quickly get this down. And uh, do that. And level scale. Okay, we need to make a few arguments. Um, uh, let's see. So we've got um, uh, high pass filter, well, the, ac the actual frequency itself, which is here, the, the, um, the value being scaled by the envelope sitting at one. So uh, by default, we'll have it at 20 hertz. So we'll hear everything. Um, trigger, um, let's go ahead and make them the same thing for low pass filter. Oops, that should be a H. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna and I'm I'm gonna add a, a lag to these. So if you suddenly change the um, the uh, drastically change the cutoff frequency to one of these, um, it'll it'll uh, attenuate the. the there's like a click if you suddenly go from you know high pass filter frequency of cutoff frequency of 20 to you know 10,000 hertz it'll go it'll make a little pop and that's unpleasant um, uh, so I'm gonna do a lag dot kr and a lag time of uh, I don't know a fifth of a second and uh, same thing for the uh, low pass filter. Okay, and uh, you know now we actually need to take our uh, input here. This will be um, signal, and now here we need a, a two-channel bus. We need a two channels here because we're dealing with stereo sound. Um, and here we actually apply the filtering. We'll do each of these filters in series. So good, our sound has been filtered. We'll make a, an amplitude argument. So we can adjust the amplitude of everything coming into our master synth. And I think that's it. I've got to make a few more arguments here. Um, an input, output, and amplitude. And I think we're done. Quick check here. Okay, no complaints. Beautiful. So what's next? Um, it's generally pretty useful to uh, create buses using the bus object rather than specifying, say, oh, you know, arbitrarily send the phaser data to bus 82 or 34 because you know hardware might differ from um, computer to computer but when you use when you allocate buses using the bus object it um, it makes sure to you know pick the 
the lowest available private bus, uh, you know, whether you want an, an audio bus or a control bus. So um, we'll have a bus uh, for the tempo data, which will be uh, you know, the, the tempo synthesis outputting data, and this is the bus it will write that data to. Um, the server and the number of channels is all we need. And um, we're going to make three buses for the phaser data because we're going to actually have three phaser synths, one of which is used for two measure loops, one of which is for four measure loops, and one of which is for eight measure loops. And again, these are also just one channel. Okay, and um, I'm going to make uh, four audio buses. So any given uh, buffer playback synth can write to uh, one of these four buses. We may not use all of them, but I'm going to make them anyway. These are audio buses. Oh, and you know what? These are audio buses too, because the phaser is an audio rate phaser. And the audio buses are two channels, because we're dealing with stereo sound. All right, there are our buses. Uh, and oh, we actually need some sound files. So this is going to be some typing here, but I'm going to start allocating, or uh, reading, rather, these uh, sound files. And I think I've got these located in sounds, and then a subfolder called loops, and then I've got some more subfolders. One for drum beats. I've got one called uh, 128 beat one. And I know it's four measures long, so I've given it a, this is a, a four at the end of it. I'll just quickly make sure this works here. Uh, we're good, it loaded it, and uh, You can just play it. Cool. So that works. Um, you know, let's actually go into the finder real quick. Um, well, actually, I can grab it this way. In my uh, super collider. So here's, if you, when you're reading a buffer, the string representing the path name uh, uh, by default, it will look in the same folder as the uh, the Super Collider application. So uh, this is the folder, and so I've got a folder called Sounds, and then I've got a folder called uh, Loops, All right. and then I have 01 Drums, which is right here, and here's the one you just heard, and I've got a few more. Sort of the same thing, but uh, no bass drum. And so, you know, I've you can see at the end of these file names, I've give, I've put a uh, hyphen and then the number of measures it is, so I can, so I don't have to listen to it every time I want to remember how many measures long it is. Okay, I have some bass lines. And then um, just some some chords. Right. Okay. So um, bear with me for a second, and I'm just gonna try as quickly as I can to just uh, give names to all these buffers and and read them in here. Uh, And again, the naming procedure, I'm using something similar here. I'm calling it drums, uh, the fourth instance, and then an underscore four because I know it's, it's uh, that many uh, measures. Mm. Good, 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 good. Um, that's good. Uh, 
Uh, pad. The cords are eight measures long. These work. Okay, just double check that those are working. Cool, that's working. Um, put the third one in there, why not? This one is four measures long. Chords. I'm gonna call this ambient four. Almost done here. an AIFF and the other one is a wave, I think. All right, I think they all work. Let's just make sure there are no problems. Oh, looks good to me. Okay. Um, just I'm gonna wrap all this stuff in an s dot wait for boot. So that way we can run all of it together. The server will boot, and then all of this stuff will get loaded. Um, might as well do that now. Um, should be good. All right, but we're not quite done. Uh, now we're going to start making some nodes. Uh, of course, we've got nothing on the server right now, just the default group. But um, I'm going to start, since we've got four synth defs and four basic components, it makes sense to make four groups. Okay, group.new. And uh, we'll have a group for the phaser group. We can use the after method to put it immediately after the tempo group, which is exactly where we want it. We'll run those in a second. So those are our groups and uh, we can create some synths now. We've got our synth defs. Uh, we'll run our groups in a second. I'm just gonna, you know, we'll run these groups now just so you can see it. One, two, three, four. So you can see it created our four groups uh, numbered with a node IDs of 1000, 1001, 1002, 1003, and here they are. Oops. Right, got group 1000, which is where any tempo synths will go, phaser synths go in group 1001, buffer synths in 1002, and master synths in 1003. Okay, gonna use our tempo synth. Um, okay, what arguments? We've got, I think I called it T underscore tempo. We'll trigger that. Uh, we'll set the beats per minute to 128, since that's the, um, all these sound files, I've I've named them starting with their tempo. The the um, you know if you if you just were to play these back in a sound file player or something, they would be at 128 beats per minute. We can change the tempo and we will later, but for now we'll just go with the um, the original tempo. And the bus that the tempo synth will output to, well, we allocated it 
um, we allocated a control bus exactly for this purpose. So we will r output the tempo synth to the tempo bus. Um, and then we need a target. And we've created a group for our tempo synth. So mm, uh, let's adjust this so it's, no, I'll keep it on one line, whatever. Maybe I'll make it a little smaller. There we go. Okay, so that's going to be our tempo synth. Uh, we got to make uh, three phaser synths. Uh, the input bus will be tempo bus, right? Because that's where the tempo data is being written to. Um, the uh, I'm calling this phaser two synth because this will be for two measure loops. So therefore, the number of beats should be eight. Um, and it's going to output this data to the phaser bus that we've allocated, phase two bus. And this will go in the phase group. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste. We need a few modifications, but not many for the four measure and eight measure phaser synths. Um, Like so, we'll write this to phase four bus and phase eight bus. They can go to the same group. Um, I think that's all we need. I'm not going to make any uh, buffer playback synths just yet because uh, I don't want to make any sound. I just want to get everything set up. Uh, let's see, I'm going to make, um, I guess I'll make two master synths just so I can show you how you can uh, send some buffers to one and send some buffers to the other. Uh, you know, some sound files one, some sound files the other, and, uh, you know, filter one and not filter the other. Um, this is called this master. Um, it's going to uh, input from uh, audio one bus. All right, that's, we've allocated four buses for the master synth to read from. You know, we haven't created any playback synths yet, so nothing's being written to these buses, but uh, master synth will be listening attentively. Uh, what do we need? Um, I think we just need an in and out here. I think we can use the default values for the amplitude and filtering. Uh, yeah, we're actually going to use a zero because this is the synth that will write to audio hardware. Uh, and this will go to the master group. Okay. Uh, I'm going to instantiate all of these. One, two, three, four, five. And now if we check our node tree, there they are. How exciting is this? So we've got a tempo synth spitting out control data, which is being used to drive three phaser U-gens, uh, one for two measure loops, one for four, one for eight. Currently, there are no buffer playback synths on group 1002. Uh, we can make some in a second, and then the last one is the uh, master. Oh, I said I was going to make another one. That's right. So, master two synth. Uh, we'll have it read from audio two bus, but it's going to write uh, to the speakers. And there we go. We've made a second one. Okay. So now we're ready to start making some sound, I think. Make a little room here. I call this buff play, is that right? The, uh, let's see, I'm going to make uh, this one play, uh, well, let's see. Uh, let's go with drums one underscore four dot buff them. The index of the buffer, this guy right here. That's the buffer that we're going to play, or that's the uh, sound file that we're going to play. Um, and since it's four measures long, we'll have to read from phaser four uh, bus. Is that capital B? Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, that's it. Let's uh, let's send this to uh audio one bus 
and the group, of course, is the buff group. Okay, I just want to make sure this works. No, 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 what did I do wrong? Um, <laughs> okay, just a, a egregious uh, syntax error. Cool. Just kill that, so that's going. Now, of course, that doesn't really tell us very much. We should make a few more and see if they're all synchronized. The audio two synth. Uh, we'll do base uh, one underscore two. That's a two measure loop, and we'll write it to the same uh, the same bus. And um, let's see, pad to H. We'll have it read from the eight measure phaser, and again we'll write it to the same the same bus. Uh, okay, uh, we gotta load our groups again. I think I destroyed everything on the server. Yeah, not a problem. And I'm gonna stagger the um, the uh, phaser synths so uh, you can hear that initially they will be. Uh, out of phase with one another. So, all right. so they're all they're all over the place. But we can uh, send a set message to the uh, phase group. So all the uh, all the nodes inside of this group will uh, re-trigger themselves. Ah, much better. Let me free these guys. Okay. So, uh, that's good. You can hear that uh, we've got three, um, three different audio files that are all synchronized, and they're reading from from different phasers, and um, you know, got some got some nice music. So um, let's let's do some more stuff. Let's clear everything off the server. Load all these again. Let's see, I had a. Uh, I'm gonna uh, resync the phasers. Okay, um, and uh, let's get these going again. So let's uh, swap out um, uh, one buffer for another. Drums two four dot buffer no. Do a different one. So you can hear that all of these guys are staying nice and synchronized, even though I'm switching from one sound file to another, because I'm not altering the phaser. I'm not altering the phaser unit generators. They're just happily ramping from zero to one again and again. Just doing their thing. Now, uh, let's see, I'm gonna switch over to um, three four is that what it's called yeah and this one is a four measure loop so I've also got to change the phaser that it's reading from um, and the way I do that I think, oh, I have to do an uh, input right it's gonna read from phase four bus instead of um, I'm 
hoping to get rid of the base for a second. And now if I if I have um, the uh, the audio three synth read from um, let's say uh, the eight measure phaser while it's a four measure loop, well then it's just going to slow it down. It's going to uh, drop it by an octave. So it takes twice as long to read through the sound file, so it's reading through um, half as fast. And the uh, you know the opposite is true for a phaser which is um, twice as fast. And so uh, you know we can switch back to uh, uh, pad one eight phase eight. Uh, is that what's going on? Yeah. There's our chords. Make it twice as fast. Two, three, four, and four times as fast. Okay, let's get rid of these for a second. Okay, what else can we do? Um, well, I can show you that it's easy to fade things in and out. Let's uh, get our groups up again. Uh, let's see. So if we've got our... Um, we'll have these going too. Uh, let's get a nice, something not too intrusive. And we'll do uh, audio one synth, that's our drums, dot uh, set fade time. Because we've included an end gate object, we can use a fade time. We'll do, I don't know, seven seconds. Um, okay, so we've set the fade time, and now all we have to do to fade it out is set the gate to zero. It'll fade out over seven seconds. There it goes. Um, we can do the same for our... Uh, let's, let's go back to this sound. Three seconds, and go. Okay, so that's how the fade time works. Um, now what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, I'll write the... Um, Uh, I'll write the uh, the bass to the second audio bus, so the uh, second synth will be controlling it. Um, and I'll write the uh, the pad and the drums to the first audio bus. So now we can do something like this. Um, master one synth dot set. Uh, we'll set the high pass filter cutoff frequency to 2000, no, 3000. And we've also got to trigger it. And now this will filter the drums and the pad, but the bass will stay unaltered. And uh, we can low pass filter. Uh, the bass, because that's going to a different synth. Alright. And uh, just really quickly, we can also change the tempo. I think this is pretty simple. Uh, just set a new... Uh, Beats per minute value. You can say, I mean, right now it's at 128, I think. Is that right? Yeah, 128 is the default that we gave it. And uh, we've also got to trigger the envelope. Uh, and you know, there's no there's no fancy pitch correcting going on here. When you slow down the speed of the, um, when you slow down the tempo, you slow down the phasers, which reads through the sound files at a slower rate, which causes um, the pitch to descend. And, you know, of course, if we made this faster. But you can see um, everything's working here. And uh, uh, I think that's, that's about all I wanted to cover. So um, 
uh, just a quick recap. I mean, we've got we've got four basic components: a tempo synth. That's how we adjust the global tempo. We've got a phaser synth def, and we use that to create three phasers running at um, two, uh, you know, which corresponds to two measure loops, four measure loops, eight measure loops. We've got a synth which actually uses those linear ramps, the phaser data, to uh, index into a sound file, and then we've got um, a master synth def, and we can use that to create any number of um, uh, master synths, so we can filter uh, whatever sound file data is coming into that master synth. Uh, we've got buses, we've got buffers, we create our groups, so uh, node order is handled for us with our groups, and um, and uh, you know, we create our synths, we can synchronize the phasers, and um, you can uh, create your synths and swap out one buffer for another, and um, uh, the way everything's set up, it's I think it's pretty easy to manipulate uh, things like tempo and equalization and which sound file you're using and and uh, so uh, this is the uh, these are the basic operational principles of the mashup machine. So um, in uh, part two, I'll show you the graphical interface that I devised, and um, it, it has all the same functionality, but it's um, uh, it's it's easier to use, and you know you don't have to worry about typing all this code. And uh, best of all, I uh, uh, it has MIDI functionality, so I, I currently have it set up uh, to to be used with the Korg Nano Control. I I have another video on the Korg Nano Control, and um, so uh, look forward to that. Stay tuned, and uh, thanks for watching.